Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. Welcome to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Hi, my name is Steve Lacey. And I'm Phil Thompson. I already slurred. Last week I slurred the opening and I slurred it again. Uh, a little bit. The Church Solutions Podcast. Welcome. Well, uh, we are from JSL Solutions. We do a weekly podcast. It's called Church Solutions Podcast. And uh, Steve and I uh, uh, work with uh, streaming video, which is streamingchurch.tv. Church App Live and MyFlock.com. Yeah. What are those two? What are those two things so you just said? Church represent? App Live is an app for your churches or your church members. And uh, my flock is a church management system, social network, and a uh, content website management system. Right. Okay, good. So just so, so we got that out of the way, because we might have somebody new listening. We have about three or four listeners. And so, you know, anytime we get an extra one, that's a big jump in the percentage. Yes. Well, we are glad that you are here, seriously, and uh, thanks for being with us here. And uh, check us out on iTunes. We're, we've got this Church Solutions podcast on several different platforms. Uh, one of them is our YouTube channel, StreamingChurch.tv, is our new YouTube channel, although you can hear some older ones and some videos, actually, on Phil Thompson Live. But we're switching things over to StreamingChurch.tv. But we're on iTunes, so review us, give us a rating. And uh, we're also on NewMediaMinistries.tv which is just a little blog that has some other stuff on there as well. And I don't know. We, we're on, you know, you can listen to us on Facebook and stuff. So anyhow, so Steve, we're talking last week. We, we talked about uh, some software to help get your volunteers scheduled. We talked a lot about worship planning. Uh -huh. But today we're going to actually talk about something that would be uh, a little tool you could use. It's not really software, uh, but it's something you could kind of maybe incorporate on your website, but it's it's really a, a little tool to help people get more involved in your church or ministry. Right. So we were talking about managing your volunteers, and we alluded to the fact that how do you get these volunteers? So right. this is... Yeah, how do you get them and get them plugged into the right place right. in the right area of ministry and get them kind of excited about it? So uh, many, many years ago, um, I ran across... Um, a, a little tool that, that somebody put together probably over 20 years ago now. And we started to use it in actually the church you and I attended. Right. You still, you still attend it. Uh, they didn't kick you out yet, uh, but uh, they will. But, <laughs> they sent uh, you off to Kansas to, well, to yeah, start I mean, another I left, church. I they, went to Kansas and then they I didn't come back. kicked you out, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's a long story. But uh, we, we use this tool to really help people discover their gifts, discover their talents, and, and get them plugged in to something in the church. And, and uh, we, there's, there's lots of ways to use this tool. So we're going to kind of give you – the, the thing I like about this tool is that you can really – if you want to put a lot of energy and time into it and have a class on it and spend several hours teaching a class about discovering your gifts, uh, you can certainly do that. Or you can do something, a little shorter version. And, and uh, there's all sorts of tools out there. But this is known by the acronym, I guess it's the acronym, right, of S-H-A-P-E, SHAPE. And it's put together by a guy who I'm not going to mention his name right now. Not that I'm ashamed. Yeah, I, so there's I, I, probably quite a few people out there that I bet are familiar with this. Probably know whole. who he is. But here, well, the they're reason familiar I'm, with this, too. I'll give him some credit later because he does deserve credit. But uh, sometimes when you mention names, uh, you, you polarize and yeah. uh, go, I don't like that guy. So give this, what we're talking about here, a chance for at least a few minutes here because you may or may not like the guy who kind of put this together. Uh, he's mostly pretty popular. But, but you know, again, it's a mega church kind of a thing. And, and uh, so I will talk about him later. But, but the acronym is SHAPE. S H A P E, and it stands for spiritual gifts, your right. heart, your abilities, your personality, and your experiences. Right. So, uh, I have found, honestly, in the twenty years or so, I've been using something like this, and I've used different versions of it, that it really does energize your people and, and volunteers to get involved because everybody kind of likes to learn a little bit more about themselves, mm -hmm. usually. And so they get excited when you say, hey, here's a little thing we want to give you that will help you learn yeah. more about who you are and, like and how God designed you and, and how you could get plugged into something. So people yeah. really do get 
It's like taking the Myers Briggs, people familiar with right. Myers Briggs, or yeah. the disc profile, or right. I just did a new one. Did you? The Fascination Index from Sally oh, Hogshead. I tell, yeah, uh, I actually uh, got a piece of that a, about a year ago or so with Dale, I think, and, and Mike. But uh, so, so anyhow, let's let's just jump into this because first of all, why is this important? It's important because. <laughs> You know, if you're, you've got to have people involved in your church. You've got to have volunteers, not just because there's too much to do, but when you have people getting involved, it connects them and it really does help them grow spiritually themselves. It helps, uh, obviously your church or your ministry, and it just adds to their life as well as the life of other people. Yeah. Well, this, I involved. mean, this is, it's really geared for the members to... I mean, discover their shape, whatever they may need to get involved with, whether it's church or even outside of church or whatever, a right. career or whatever. Sure. I mean, it is a side benefit that you want to your vol- you walk your volunteers through this. Mm-hmm. Then there could be some very natural connections with how to get right. uh, plugged in at yeah. church. So we're gonna t- we're gonna cover it here in a moment, but I want to just I'll, I'll give you kind of the nuts and bolts of it in a moment. But it's really important for for everybody involved. Uh, to do this. So it's not just a, Hey, you know, we need you to help, help our church out here. It really benefits people is what, what I'm getting at here. And then, and then really, you know, we'll talk a little bit of how you can kind of proceed with this and then uh, what to do with the results. So, so let's just jump into it. Okay. So shape, the acronym shape, S H A P E discovering your shape. And, and, uh, the first one is S stands for spiritual gifts. So again, uh, depending on what your background is, listening to this podcast, you know, what your religious background is, your denominational background or whatever, spiritual gifts mean different things to different people. Uh, But there is a scripture in 1 Peter 4, uh, actually 4.10 from the New Living Translation. It says, God has given gifts to each of you from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Manage them well so that God's generosity can flow through you. So I believe in spiritual gifts. Uh, the, your interpretation of that might be a little different than mine, but uh, but I do believe the bottom line is uh, God wants to use you. He and that to, everyone has a gift. And everybody has a gift. At least one gift is what we believe. Anyway, at least I believe that. And, and uh, there's people that believe that. So so obviously, you know, when, when the scripture says manage them well, I think it's up to us to, to really, you know, discover what our gifts are and, and then begin to, you know. Right. As a... As a body, discover what the gifts yeah. are within your body. I mean, the bo- the church body. Within I mean. the church, but also individually. Yeah. Right. I mean, because, you know, I, I guarantee I've been doing this for years, and you've been involved in some of this. Most people, when you say, what's your spiritual gift, a lot of people say, uh, I don't really have anything, or I don't know. And, and that's very common. And a lot of people don't really know what their, what their giftings are. And so uh, from a leadership sp- standpoint, it's our job as leaders to help people discover right. what their gifts are. And there's resources out there. I think within, yeah, yeah. even within the MyFlock system on the profile set, there's a spiritual That's right. gifts yeah, test that, that we'll go through yeah. and tell you uh, how you score in the various areas. Wow, great. Based we're, on answering some questions. It's awesome. So we're pushing our product and didn't well, even know about it's, it. It's actually another product that's linked to ours, oh, but okay. it's not our product, but it's okay. it's a spiritual gifts assessment. Yeah. And I'm sure you Google spiritual gifts. There's probably yeah. some really current. And again, there's all sorts of different ideas on it, and that's fine. That's up to you You know, to decide what fits within you know where your belief system is and what you want to do as far as, you know. Uh, uh, what spiritual gifts are, but so, uh, and, and even somebody who would say, well, I, you know, I'm not of the charismatic Pentecostal variety. Uh, I think most people would say, well, there's definitely some kind of gifts that are still involved and still active. So I think it's as, as, as somebody, if you're listening and you're involved in pastoral or you're leading a team or whatever, or, or on the board of your church, it, it, part of the responsibility does come down to as church leadership, helping people discover. And then as individuals, we have our own responsibility to discover our own, our own gifts and stuff. Right. You know, you know, so that's where I'm at. So spiritual gifts, that, that's it. So the way this whole thing works is you help people discover what their spiritual gifts are, but not just, not just spiritual gifts. There's more to it than that, right. which would move into the next part of our acronym, right. which is, which is heart. So heart, but the, Going back to the spiritual gifts, you have we have some examples that spiritual gifts. There's well, there's, there's a whole uh, list of them. It, yeah, there's, there's admin. There's uh, hospitality, hospitality, administration, yeah. organization. So, 
Yeah. There's, so, there's actually, I think I, at one point, I think I did a little study a few years ago that serving, there's like over 30 giving, gifts. Yeah. If you look at all throughout the Bible, there's, you know, 30 or 40 spiritual gifts, you know, that you could possibly say that's a spiritual gift. Now, again, we're talking, you know, to all sorts of different people out here of different cultures. And, and there may be somebody listening to his podcast saying, well, I think there's only nine spiritual gifts, you know, or some of you might say there's none. They're all, they've all passed away, which I, I think if you looked at him, you say, well, maybe only a certain type has passed away. You, you see what I'm saying? There's yeah. the charisma gifts and I come from so, a diverse background. Right. So there's, I'm just you know, laying out, there's some, so you discover your gift, which is going right. to kind of help point you as well. Exactly. But it's not right. just about gifts, right? So is what I'm trying to get at, and that's so the thing I like about this this acronym is it's not just yeah, spiritual so gifts. I, we were on to heart, well, on to heart, yeah. Okay, and I took us back, so right. let's go back to heart. Huh? So heart, so heart would be defined as what's your passion. So when we're talking heart, we're not talking the physical organ right. in your body. <laughs> we're talking about your passion, your values. Your passions for life, for things that you things that you love to do, and 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 you know some of you may say, well, I just you know I love to go out and 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 work out, or or you know if you're one of those kind of people, you know you probably don't like me, but but you know you might have a passion to do certain sports, right? Uh, and and there's nothing wrong with that. And actually, you can if you if you do this thing right, you can see where this could actually still be incorporated in church volunteering and church work. Mm-hmm. It really could be. So the things that you like in life, uh, uh, and we we believe, uh, I believe, and I know that there, there's God given passions, deep desires right. to do things, and, and they may not fit. You know, off right off top of your head, they may not. You may not think, well, that that doesn't fit within a church context or. But it can. Context. I, I'm just thinking here, some things that are that um, friends of mine are passionate about. My brother. Actually, I have a brother and a brother-in-law. Both enjoy cooking. It's mm-hmm. a passion of theirs. Yeah, it's not a passion of mine. <laughs> <laughs> My son really likes to cook. He's yeah. sixteen and he likes to cook. But see, you could take something like that, and and you could easily incorporate that into to volunteering in your church, right? Or or, or doing serving or in whatever. some area. If it's not church work, at least in the community, yeah, or something or, like that. Yeah, this also would fit into. I mean. Finding the ideal job or vocation for yourself as well, right? Absolutely. absolutely. You could certainly use some of this stuff, yeah, for careers and and, yeah. and outside of, of, of religious deals. I mean, you know, you have a – what's your passion? You have a passion for technology, right? Yeah. You I always mean, have. And, 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 you know, you've used your gift and, and that passion to help churches. Yep. Uh, you know, and so there, there's there's lots of different things out there. And of course, we're just touching on this. We don't have a lot of time, but this is just designed to kind of wet your whistle. And then I'll point you to some resources at the end of this. Right. All right. So let's move on. Spiritual gifts is one. H is heart. So we're going through this acronym shape. The next one is A. A stands for? Abilities. All right. So abilities. That's, that's your what? Natural talents, uh, the things that you have. That are very natural skills, skills yeah, set. skills that you have. So, uh, yeah, these things would need to be. I mean, they they coach uh, new businesses as well. That you you want to have a passion, but you also want to have abilities. Right. So, yeah, um, you might this, have a passion for apply. music, but but you, you can't have... play, right? <laughs> exactly. Or you can't do anything. Now you could still be involved in music in some other capacity, right. but but if you have no ability for right. to do it, you might not want to yeah. be a part of the worship band or. Um, do something musically yeah. if you have no ability for and, it. You know, somebody who was a worship leader for a long time, me, for instance, you know, I ran across a lot of people that had a passion for music, all right? But they couldn't sing worth a lick. <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, their grandmother told them they could, but the, the fact was they couldn't. So it just wasn't going to work being on the worship team. But they could do another. They could do maybe something in the area of sound. Yeah, maybe they run or, sound because they've got a good ear for or music or something. You know, yeah. uh, related to 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 worship, they could be in. See, right. so again, what we're talking about this today because we want to help you empower you to get people involved in your church to get people, you know, connected. And so when people discover these things about themselves, it energizes them and it gives you an opportunity to plug them in to something that they're going to like to do. And, and that's why I'm kind of recapping that again. Yeah. But all right, so abilities. So again, if if you're looking at people to get involved in something, you want to look at their spiritual gifts, their heart, 
their passion, of course, and then their abilities. Mm-hmm. But that's not all, right? That's not all. We're on, are we on to P? We're on, we'll just move on to P here. So P stands for? Personality. All right. So personality. Now this is you – know, you alluded to this a little bit earlier, Steve, but uh, there's all sorts of personality tests out there, and, and I like them. I, there's a lot of good ones out there, the Briggs-Myers and – and all those different ones out there is the a list of them. score, yeah. Some of them go really deep, okay? And so, again, the thing I like about this acronym we're talking about today is you don't have to necessarily put people through this rigorous hours and hours and hours and hours to get them involved in ministry, unless that's something people want to do and you want to do that, and then go for it. But when it comes to personality, you can – there are some simple things that, that, that people can identify about. You know, Are they extrovert? Are they introvert? Yeah. You know, it doesn't take a lot of testing to figure that out. Uh, there's other personality types out there. I can't even think of them off the top of my head, but there's like. Those are two main. Yeah, those are. Categories. Very simple. One. But but then there's, I mean, you know, if you've got a, if you've got somebody that's a, an introvert and you want to plug them into being an usher and a greeter in your church, yeah. they could it, do that, but it's maybe not the best yeah. fit for them. And it's really it's where they it's it's, what, it's where they get energy. Exactly, is how it's defined. So that if someone gets energy being in a group of people, then they're typically an extrovert. Right. And if people get refreshed, and if it just wears them out being in a group, then they're right. but they get refreshed and energized and excited alone. alone then yeah. so yeah, yeah. But that that's one and example. There's no right or wrong, and there's no good right. or bad, and there's no better than yeah. or worse. But see again, where you know, and whatever you decide to use. If you're going to use something like this or are using it, you know, you can go deep into this or you can go not as deep when it comes to personality. But, uh, and, and again, there's like, there's, well, there's, there's like, there's so many different ones out there. There's like four types and then there's eight types and, you know, we can go yeah. on and on. But, but uh, the bottom line is. And there's the, 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 the beaver and the lion yeah, exactly. and the golden retriever. I, I can't remember what it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. all those different things and they're fine, you know, and, and again, you know, when you have something like this for people, if you have a little course or something like this for people, you know, a lot of people get excited about that and it will help you help, help them and help you energize what you're trying to do. So personality, the point about this whole thing is, is again, you, you want to match people's spiritual gifts up their heart, their ability, their personality to an area of ministry that's going to be a good fit. And I use that example about ushers, you know, I mean, there's introverts that can be very good ushers and greeters, but they just have, they just know, Hey, I'm, I need to step out of my yeah, shell yeah, a little bit and throw some extra energy and into put it. some more energy to be a little more extra extrovert, even though that's not my nature, but you would find that more people would be more excited about greeting if they were more extroverts. That's just right. an example, uh, you know, so, uh, that's how you would use personality to fit a certain area of ministry. All right. Uh, that makes any sense. So, all right. So, and then I guess we'll just move on to the last one in the acronym, and that is E stands for experiences. So experiences is the last one. And this was a good one because this is really kind of comes down to your life experiences. Uh, you know, if you're old like us, you've got a lot of them. <laughs> But even if you're younger, you can still you still have experiences as a youth or as a young adult that right. you could use. And and you know somebody used to say, "God never wastes an experience, good or bad." So uh, you know there are there are uh, there's people I've plugged into ministry that that uh, were gifted in such a way where they could maybe do some some light counseling, you know. And, and uh, for instance, there there's some some women that we've had involved in leadership that maybe had some bad experiences uh, with sexual abuse or, or something like that. They came out of it, they got help, you know, they were healthy, and but they used that bad experience to of help abuse to help others. And so their experience, even if it was negative at the time, was still turned around, mm-hmm. and they were helping other people. And of course, that that's just one example. But there's, you know, a lot of people have good experiences. But for me, you know, I've I had a lot of experience in broadcasting. Uh, you wouldn't know it by the way I talk now, but uh, <laughs> you know, and a, a lot of that was was used for as I began to do more and more public speaking in church. That helped me. That also helped me in the ways of of uh, helping the church in areas of promotion, right. because of my background in radio and broadcasting. Again, it, it was an experience I had that. You say, well, that's, you know, that was a secular experience. How could you use that for church? Well, you could certainly use lots oh, of things. Yeah. In my world, I 
I was interested in te- cars originally right. and cars still today, but right. um, that led to some technology or an engineering degree, and right. which led to the technology thing, which kind of led to programming. So yeah, it's uh, that's kind of where you know I've applied the experiences of I've I've had mm-hmm. in the technology arena working at the aerospace company yeah um to the church it certainly has helped us uh, with jsl solutions so again our point to this is you know this is should you could use a tool like this or a version of this tool to get people more involved in your church and your ministry and 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 again they get excited about this so you know how do you do this is up to you and honestly you can just google this uh, online, just Google discovering your shape. And, uh, and I didn't say this at the beginning, but this was all put together for the most part by a guy by the name of Rick Warren, who's out of California, a church called Saddleback. All right. And again, Rick, uh, you know, some of his uh, views, depending on what your background, you may not always agree with some of them, but he's done a lot to get to help churches. You know, put well, things together. He wrote the Purpose Driven Church, and actually, and then a little bit later, the Purpose Driven Life. Yes. You know, and, and you know, so again, uh, you know, he's gotten. There's always critics. You know, I'm sure there's critics of this podcast. You know, uh, but but the truth is, sometimes you can take things if you like or dislike somebody. You could still take something that's good and use it. And I have found that you can do different versions of this shape. You know, you can you can do. Ours, you know, we had a class called 301 that we used to do right. at, at your church. And, and I did a different version of that and a shorter version of it. So you can go as long as you want or as deep as you want with some of this stuff. But the so, point is, have something that you could use to get people involved and hopefully get them in the right well, place. It's, it's really an investment in your people that will pay dividends with them potentially getting involved with your church. Right. So you got to pour into the people and then... You know, you'll, you'll reap the rewards later. Yeah. And, and again, as we said at the beginning, it's beneficial for them, not just the selfish thing. Well, we just need somebody to help us do this stuff here yeah. in church. Go it, take it's your much more so than you that. Can, yeah. yeah it's, it's helping people get connected to each other and discovering their gifts. So uh, getting more people involved in your ministry, that's what we're doing here. That's what we talked about. Uh, and, and, you know, lots of, lots, lots of, lots of free stuff out there when it comes to shape now. I mean, you can, you can go to Rick Warren's deal and you can purchase some stuff, which, you know, is, is, is good. Or you can get a lot of the free, there's a lot of free versions of it out there on the internet, churches that have done a version of it and it's out there for other people to see and use. Right. So I, I would strongly recommend something like that for your church, your ministry, and, and the rewards, I think, will be good. So, anyhow, that's that's what we had to say today. So, feedback on that. We'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, our email is support at streamingchurch.tv. Uh, we'd love to, to get your thoughts on this. Maybe you have something else that you use that's, that's not a SHAPE acronym, but something else that you think is good and has helped your volunteers discover their gifts, their talents, and get it plugged in. All right. Sounds good. All right. Good deal. So, all right. So, uh, again, find us on iTunes. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. And and it's just under Church Solutions Podcast. Give us a little review. Uh, check us out on YouTube. Just look for streamingchurch.tv. We have our own channel now because my channel is, is uh, still got stuff on there, but the new stuff is coming on streamingchurch.tv. And we're on social media. Check us out on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. Uh, facebook.com forward slash streaming church dot TV. Yep. And uh, we're on Twitter and all that good stuff. We'd love to hear from you. And if you have topics you would like us to cover, whether, you know, it's tech related, which is what mostly we do, but even leadership stuff and things to help the church, we'd love to tackle it. Maybe even get you on our podcast. Let us know support at streaming church dot TV. All right, we're done. Another, another one in the can folks. Thanks so much for being with us. We hope that you do are doing well. And we hope you have a great day. And for Steve and I, uh, thanks for listening. We will catch you next time for another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast.